Okay. All right. So this has been a highly requested video or I've had a lot of people reach out to me with questions about this topic. I personally never thought I was going to publicly talk about it. I'm an open book type of person. I will I will talk to anybody about anything. It's just not something I thought I was going to publicly talk about on social media or anything cuz I know it's a very common issue that a lot of women have and it's not unique to me. I know it's a very common issue, but I guess that's maybe why I have a lot of questions about it because a lot of people actually do have it and so and a lot of you guys have asked me questions or how we conceived or what our story was or our journey I guess to conceiving and it's definitely not lost on me that I feel very blessed to have had the story and journey that we have had. I know that there's so many women who struggle for years trying to conceive and or are never able to conceive. Infertility is a beast. It's definitely, it's an emotional roller coaster and my heart goes out to people who have been trying for years and years and have other health issues that they just have a really hard time conceiving. So we actually did have a little bit of a journey with getting pregnant. I'm just sharing mine and what happened for us and what worked for us and how we were able to conceive. So I think it all starts back with my Lyme disease. I was really, really sick for quite some time, but it all kind of started with my Lyme and I got diagnosed officially with Lyme disease in May of 2019. And that very first appointment that I had with my Lyme doctor was a hard, it was a heavy, hard day. It was a lot of information to take in. It was basically, you have to change your whole diet and lifestyle as in no alcohol, no caffeine, no sugar, no gluten, no dairy, cut carbs, all that. Basically, all the, all the fun things, right? Like, <laughs> as soon as she said I can't have alcohol or caffeine, I was like, what? And sugar, dairy, gluten, I mean, that's all, the, that's all the good things in life, right? So that was hard. And then she also mentioned that Lyme disease is known to cause infertility. And that freaked me out because that was just another thing added on top of this crazy appointment. But the one thing that stood out to me was Lyme disease is known to cause infertility or cause women to not be able to get pregnant. Late summer, early fall, I started tracking my ovulation with ovulation test strips and I was realizing that I was never getting a positive and I thought maybe I was just doing them wrong or I wasn't taking them often enough or I was taking them at the wrong time or I wasn't doing it right. So I just kind of let, I just kept trying and just to see if I could get a positive or a peak test at some point. Months went by, I was not getting any positive tests at all. They were, there was always a faint line on my tests, but I never ever got a peak or a positive, ever. So I knew that I wasn't ovulating because typically they say that you have to be trying for a year to be able to get in an appointment with them. And what I said was that I had been off birth control and we, haven't, we hadn't been preventing for a year. So that's what I said to them because I knew, I knew my body, I was tracking and I was being proactive ahead of time and I knew that I wasn't ovulating. So I wasn't gonna wait that full year of trying before I got into an appointment because I knew I wasn't ovulating. I was, took charge and I was proactive and I just said we had been off birth control for a year and they didn't really question that. So that's what I said to them to get in when I did. So once I told my Lyme disease doctor that I didn't think I was ovulating, she ordered a hormone test just to see where my hormone levels were and the results came back that my testosterone was off the charts is what she said and my estrogen was super super low so she thought given these results that they look like PCOS hormone results but she said that they were so off that she thinks the test was contaminated they were that bad that the testosterone was that high and the estrogen was that low and they were so off that she thought it was maybe a contaminated test so at first she said oh, this looks like PCOS. So then I thought, oh, great, I have PCOS. And then she came back and said, no, I don't think it is. I think this test is contaminated. So I thought, okay, maybe I don't then. 
And then what she did was she ordered me to go see a fertility specialist in my area. And then I had a full workup done with my fertility specialist. They did blood work and an ultrasound. And when they did the ultrasound, but I got a result a couple hours after my appointment, it was so quick. And it just said, I definitely had PCOS basically that I had 25 or 30 or more cysts on each ovary that were greater than three millimeters something I'd have to look back at my results but they they just said you have a lot of cysts you have you definitely have PCOS and I was so surprised because at this point I thought that that test was just contaminated and this ultrasound was gonna come back fine and everything so I was super, super shocked to get the results of the ultrasound saying that I had really bad PCOS because I guess looking back, I definitely have some symptoms, but it's not something I would have ever picked out on my own. So some symptoms that I noticed were as soon as I went off my birth control, I'd been on the same birth control for years, like probably close to 10 years. And so being on that birth control regulated my hormones. And as soon as I went off of that, my hormones just went crazy. And I felt like I was gaining weight, or at least I felt like I was gaining weight. Not at a crazy rapid rate, but definitely not losing weight. And for the diet that I was doing with the no sugar, no dairy, no red meat, no gluten, all of that, I felt like I should have been, I don't know, not trying to lose weight, but kind of shed a, little, a few pounds and at least not gain weight, at least not gain weight. That's why I was like, what the heck is going on? That's really the only symptom that I can look back and say, yeah, I guess that made sense. So I guess it's really hard for us to know whether I've always had PCOS and just being on birth control for 10 plus years has masked that, or if my Lyme disease caused PCOS because Lyme disease is known to do all sorts of weird things with your body. But since I kind of knew that I wasn't ovulating and I knew that my hormones were a little off just in general, I started doing all these things to help with our fertility issues. So I started doing the ovulation test strips just to see if I was even ovulating. Thank goodness I did that because that's how I figured out that I was not ovulating and I was able to call my Lyme doctor who was able to call my fertility doctor to get me in and get the ball rolling. I was drinking fertility tea. I was taking a prenatal. We started using pre-seed. I tried that Vitex Berry and then also started that myocytol, I think it's how you say it, which just helps with ovary function overall. So I started doing all of these natural things and just trying to help regulate my hormones and my ovary function and just overall fertility until we kind of really knew what was going on. But once they diagnosed me with PCOS, the doctor said that she knew which medication to put me on because it was either between Clomid if I didn't have PCOS or Letrozole if I did have PCOS. So finding out that I did have PCOS, she knew that she should put me on Letrozole, which was super helpful to know which me fertility medication to start me on. But this all happened in March. So it was right when COVID hit. So they said they were holding all fertility treatment until COVID was over. And why do I have to wait till COVID is over to just take a pill, to take a fertility medication? So that was such a roller coaster of not knowing when we'd be able to start, if we would be able to start. But my fertility doctor is awesome and she worked a way around it and she got me, she called me back like that week and said, we're gonna start you on Letrozole this cycle. And I was like, this cycle? Like this cycle coming up. I'm like, I'm on day 27. So she was even excited with me. She's like, so we're gonna start this like next week. And I, I just couldn't believe how fast it happened. And I was just, I feel like it's just because I've been, I was so proactive with everything. I didn't wait and I gave them reasons and I had everything happen quickly. So when she said we were starting that and it just happened to fall on a day that I would have started it next week. That was awesome because if I had passed that time, I would have had to wait a whole nother month. Because with Letrozole, I took it on cycles day three through seven, and it's just supposed to prompt ovulation. And so she started me at the lowest dose at 2.5 milligrams. And even during this whole appointment with her, she just said, you know, given your situation, I'm gonna start you at this low dose. If you don't ovulate, we'll bump you up a dose. If you don't ovulate, then we'll bump you up a dose higher. And she just prepped us for 
you can only take this medication for 11 or 12 months and then we'll start looking at IUI or IVF or anything. She just said, hey, this is going to be a little bit of a journey for you guys. So we were just mentally prepared that this was gonna be quite the journey for us to conceive. We didn't think it was gonna happen for a long time, but either way, I was so excited to just be getting started on letrozole and started on a treatment and just to see what happens from there. And then so cycle day 18 of the first round of letrozole that I did, I got a positive ovulation test, which I have never gotten in my life, ever. I was just as excited getting that as a positive pregnancy test. I was, because I had never seen that before. I've never gotten a positive ovulation. But either way, I was just really excited to have that positive ovulation test. So I ovulated on cycle day 18, and then I got my very first faint line positive. I wouldn't even call it a positive because I thought it was maybe an evap line or something, but I got my very first faint positive on 8DPO. So I ovulated late and I got an early pregnancy, positive pregnancy test or faint positive. Now looking back, I know that it was a positive. It happened so quick, but I got my positive digital test on 10DPO. So 10 days past ovulation, I got my positive pregnancy test and I was in complete shock because it was our first month on letrozole on fertility medication at the lowest dose at 2.5 milligrams it triggered ovulation for me and I got pregnant I <laughs> I still can't believe that it happened on the first month for us and I just feel so great I'm gonna get emotional because I feel so grateful that it happened on the first month for us especially being told that it was probably gonna be a journey for us and that it was probably gonna take some time we just still are in shock and I can't believe it. So I think having Lyme was a just a blessing in a weird way, in more ways than one, that I was able to get in to my fertility doctor quicker because of having Lyme and having that pre-existing condition. And then also going through feeling so sick in a weird way has helped me really love and appreciate being pregnant because it's just, like I said, it's just been a breeze for me, because it's just nothing compared to how sick I was of Lyme. So it was all those months of trying and figuring out that I wasn't ovulating that really helped me get in and get diagnosed with PCOS as quick as I did. It was our first month on letrozole at a 2.5 dosage that we got pregnant. But from someone who thought was going to have a really long journey to end up getting pregnant on the first month, a fertility medication. I'm just hoping that it makes other people feel hopeful and that there are so many options for fertility nowadays and just be an advocate for your own health and take action, be proactive. So my game plan from here, I guess, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of focusing on my pregnancy right now and trying to stay healthy with my pregnancy. But I'm thinking after I give birth, I personally want to try to go back on birth control as quick as I can to see if I can regulate those hormones and try to get back on track with that a little bit. But I honestly don't know. I guess I'll see what my doctor suggests or thinks and I'll talk to my Lyme doctor and see what she suggests or thinks. But I don't really know. I'm open-minded and I'm just kind of going with the flow at this point. But yeah, that's my, that's my story with my PCOS and my fertility journey. I know that everybody's journey looks so different and I feel very blessed to have had the journey I did and just thank God every day for our journey and everything that got us to here where we're at now and that everything's going good and we just continue to pray for a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby and I'll continue praying for all of you guys who are going through infertility too. I know it's not a fun journey, it's not something I thought I was going to talk about ever but I'm hoping that this can help someone and I'm always here for questions. If you have any questions, please let me know. So yeah, that is our journey in a nutshell and I just continue to pray for all of you guys going through or struggling with infertility. And like I said, I'm an open book, so let me know if you have any questions and I would be so glad to help. Okay, bye.